you know, I still meet people who are hella pissed about that. And I used to tell people that and be like, finance and design. Largely, the people who found me found me in a very specific manner. Like they were like, I'm specifically looking for this person. Mm-hmm. The way people think that, oh, we have our own money that's superior to your money. Your service is also not worth what you're mm. asking for, you know. <laughs> Even other artists don't know what to do with us. Hello, my name is Mothani Gitao. Welcome to another episode of Just Doing Life, the podcast, a space where we explore all the parts of life that we do not like to say out loud. After all, we are all just winging it. So episode 19 is here. I know we've taken a break, but we're back. And it is one, It is with one of the closest friends that I have made in the last couple of years. He's a creative in every way of the word, and he makes extremely beautiful art. He considers himself an observer in the sidelines, watching everything unfold. <laughs> I'll be talking to Victor about surviving the Kenyan creative industry. So thank you for accepting to pull up You're and welcome. have this conversation with me. Yeah. Do you do you have a, do you call yourself like a creative or an artist? I think artists. Yeah. But to be honest, uh-huh. I never need to call myself anything. Else. People call you things. Ah, like <laughs> <laughs> you see, it's the yeah. same way. It's the same thing about you know uh, when someone is asking for my number and then I remember that actually I don't call myself. It's kind of hard having to remember that. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> like you don't need to call yourself anything. Sometimes yeah. people will just call you what they No, but what if someone says, Oh, what title do you go by? Damn. Like, you know, sometimes there's yeah. people you'd go someone for like, oh, we want to have a title under your name. What do we write? I think artist. That is just artist works, encompasses yes. everything. Yeah, yeah, sure. Everything that I do. Like you it's do. A more comfortable. I think of myself as an artist mm-hmm. who does creative things. Does that make sense? Ah, yes, yes. that does make sense. So as someone who watches this podcast yes. and as my friend, yes. you know we usually have to share a moment of joy from the previous week. Okay, a moment of joy from yes. the previous week. Yes. Wow. Okay. I I am one of those people who just, for me, it's the small wins. Mm-hmm. Small, you know, just small wins just bring you so much joy. So, like, I'll just be uh, I'll just achieve something in, say, a painting that I was doing. Uh-huh. I'll be so happy that I actually got that because I did not anticipate it going in that direction. Mm-hmm. So for me, that are small wins. Mm. Okay. But at the same time, the realization that, ah, mangoes, but was <laughs> You know, the one thing, like, mangoes bring me so much joy. So much joy, you, you don't understand. You can't comprehend. <laughs> like, <it's, laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's just so much joy in mangoes. Mm. The really huge, you know, orange juicy ones. <sighs> orange juicy ones. Yeah, oh, the ones that, that are orange inside. Exactly. Okay, I yeah, get that. Yeah, she just, yes. And I, I feel like the only reason I'm still living in this country is because mangoes. The best mangoes I've encountered are from Garissa. Oh, really? Because I ask. When I'm buying mangoes, I actually ask. Uh-huh. I'll be like, hey, where do your mangoes come from? That's a really, yeah. Like, uh, oh. what do you call it? You know, when you track your, where the produce originates mm, from? Yes. I don't know what they call that, you know, and they do that a lot in in Europe and the US. Like, yeah. they're very keen on knowing where Was food it comes ethically from. sourced? Is it ethically sourced? Mm-hmm. Well, for a fact, I could tell you that no cucumbers were killed in the production <laughs> of said mangoes. <laughs> But yeah. the best mangoes I've encountered are from Garissa. Ah. Those mangoes are good. Mm-mm. My moment of joy was um, I threw a, a surprise party for my baby bro. Okay. Yeah. yeah so that's... we forgot his birthday. Okay. <laughs> so I was overcompensating. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We forgot his birthday. And it also happens that on his birthday, he was unwell. Okay. And Ooh. there was like a lot of stuff happening. Okay. So we kind of forgot to even do that whole, the like phone call for happy yeah, birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. He called me and he was crying. Oh, and I God. felt so bad. <laughs> okay, how old is your baby brother? He turned eleven. Okay. Yeah, I know he's. What hey, did they? Okay. I still, I still struggle with the fact that my parents were doing things and was <laughs> in their house. <laughs> Be kind like, to your parents. You They're also experiencing life for the first I, time too. I, you know, <laughs> like this, this is like I would rather not know. <laughs> no, actually, no. You know, when you think about it, it's just like yeah, just, just do. It. Just doing life. They're, they're also it just is, doing they were life. just doing life with me in their house. Exactly. That is the the part is with me in their house. But do you know what the keyword is? Their house. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, their house. <laughs> That's the keyword. I don't know why you're That's missing true. that. That's true. Yes. But he really had a good time. Okay. Uh, we invited his friends. He didn't mm-hmm. know what was happening. He was getting irritated, Kidogo, uh, towards before like the surprise happened because he knew something was happening, but no one was telling him what. Ah. So he okay. was just like, "Okay, why are you not telling me what's happening?" Okay. And then uh, when he he saw the cake and guys, because we had to send him outside, he came and then there's cake and all his friends were there and. They were singing. He mm-hmm. was very happy. And then uh, in the okay. end, they did that whole washing him. What? Yeah, because yes. it's, a, it's a whole thing. And he okay. was so happy. He was very happy. So I was like, oh. He's 11? Yeah, oh. he just turned 11. Ah, uh, okay. Happy birthday to your younger brother. Yes, to Nate. Yes. Uh, I remember one day waking up on my birthday. Yeah. And being like, yeah, it's my birthday. Uh-huh. Then I saw my mom preparing a huge pot of githeri and I was <laughs> like, this woman hates me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I get that uh, feeling. <laughs> like, oh my lord! Damn, like, wow, not on my birthday. Ah. <laughs> Even me, I would catch feelings. You're cooking the. I caught feelings. I caught feelings. I'm catching yes. major feelings. I caught feelings, and then uh, when I was about that age, I was in boarding school. At so, eleven. Yeah. That's so young. I was, I was practically a young adult, but <laughs> 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 no, basically, I was in boarding school. Yeah. And uh, I learned the hard way to keep your, you know, cards close to the chest. Like mm-hmm. you don't say, you don't say when your birthday is because they're gonna wash you. Yes. Properly wash you. I know. <laughs> yes. So you know, funny enough, I've I've only been washed once on my birthday. Okay. When I turned twenty. Mm. Yeah. I've been washed. Twice. Twice. Okay. Yeah. yeah twice in school. Somehow. I think at first you're like, I don't want to be washed, and then you realize it's like it's the joy that comes with. That ex- there's a joy in that experience, I think. It depends. <laughs> okay, it, it depends. depends. It depends on where you go to school. You know, oh, boys can yeah. be little hooligans too. <laughs> like it's such a fun experience when you're looking at it and you're like, oh my God, such a memorable experience. Yeah, because also but in you school don't you to... don't get cake, you don't get things. Yeah, so like yeah, the only sure, thing yes. you'd get in such a situation is the washing. Where people the are washing. like, we recognize it's your day. Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah, it was quite quite an interesting thing. But yes, okay, I digress. Okay, that's me. cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so you said that you consider yourself a societal observer. Yeah. Watching everything unfold from the sidelines. Yes. What does that look like? What does that look like? I think that is where our artistry comes from, uh-huh. to be honest. Like every artist you come across is in some sort of way trying to observe the society, the environment. Mm-hmm. And our environment tends to be society, you know. So that's that's what happens. You're not necessarily you, you might not necessarily be making policy changes to stuff. Yeah. You might not necessarily be like you're not an architect basically transforming the city, you mm-hmm. know, changing the skyline and all that. But you're observing as things unfold. Yeah. You know? Yes, that's that's what it's like to be an artist. Documenting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And with all documentation comes observation, I think. So do you ever like sit somewhere and just like people watch? I people watch when I'm walking. Oh, I people watch through. Too. Yeah, I people watch <laughs> when I'm walking, when I'm in the matatu. I'll yeah. just be there silently just looking at the situation. And I'm like, okay. Do you ever come up with stories where you, like, you you try and get a backstory to someone? Like, you see someone and you're like, oh, that's an interesting character. Yeah. And then you're like, I wonder where they're going. And then you decide. Well, yeah. I've actually done it consciously. I used to do it a lot when I still had a studio mm-hmm. in town. Yeah. And it meant that I had a routine. Every single day I'd be walking through town on mm-hmm. my way to the studio. And uh, after a while, you start seeing the same faces at the exact same time. Like at yeah. around the same time. Like at around the corner where you have uh, International Life House, there is a lady I'd meet there on her way to work. And, you know, you also start forming stories like some dude you meet near Technical University. Or my studio was near, was in Railway Museum. So mm-hmm. that's why that was my route. So, you know, you start observing the same faces and forming some stories. Yeah, definitely happens. Did you ever like get to a point, you know, those points where that person doesn't show up on a specific day and you start getting worried? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> or I'm late. I actually realized that I'm a few minutes late. Ah, because it's like, yes. oh, I didn't bump into so and so. I didn't bump into so and so. And you actually bump into them. Now, at do you night. give them names? I used to give people names. I didn't give them names. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I used to give them names. I didn't give them names. I, but... I would decide, oh, this one is married with a child. This mm, one is not mm, married. Mm. She's pro- She probably works at something like this. So I'd have those because I also had a routine when when I used to go to the office every day okay, okay. and it was the same thing where I would leave the house at the same time so mm-hmm. I'd see sometimes I'd see 
like you're saying similar people. Yeah, yeah, sure, but for similar. me, the people I would notice, I, I noticed a lot okay. were people who are always working. So it's like the guy selling gazettes, mm-hmm. uh, the guy with the sweets. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. yeah. You know what the interesting thing is? Actually, the fact that those people also notice you back. Mm. The places you pass by, those people notice you. Yeah. And they can tell. They know that you pass by there at around this time. Eventually, you start patronizing their businesses. And yeah. this, the weirdest thing happened to me. Like, uh, I bumped into, no, I, I went into a shine stand mm-hmm. randomly into town, like, years later. You know, this is, uh, I left that space in 2019. Mm-hmm. So this year, I was somewhere getting my, my shoes cleaned. And uh, this lady was like, oh, you look so familiar. And I could tell, I, I already knew where I knew her from. Ah. But it was also realizing that, oh, you actually noticed me from back then. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, like, that's so interesting. Yes. Don't I never, for some random reason, I always assume people can't notice me. Like notice. when I am observing, I feel like it's like I'm in, you know, like no. that fly on the wall. You're not in a void. <laughs> You're not in a void. These people notice so you. True. They're like, ah, that's you. I see you pass by here. Yeah. Yes. The very uh you see Because you're not the only one, just people watching. I've never yes. actually never thought, oh, I'm I'm not the only one people watching. I always assume I'm the only one people watching. Uh well, there are people who do it but they don't have a time for it. Mm. And also you also might underestimate the control that people who work in certain spaces in town yeah. have in their you know, on their environment. Like they're very mm. aware of what's going on in their environment. Yeah. Yeah, they have complete control. They know who passes by here when. Mm. By the way, ah, that makes so much sense. Oh, wow. Um, oh my God. Do you remember when we met? Mm -hmm. That was in 2020, 2020, 2020, 2021, 2021. Right. Yes. That was the first time we met. And then, you know, had we met, we had, we, we just needed each other online. Yes. Like, I think we, we were aware of each other's work, Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. we'd not met before. Yeah. We hadn't met. And then you DM'd me and you're like, hey, yes. I want to be your friend. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Application for friendship. <laughs> it was basically, it was actually a very specific request. It was, yes. You have this house that, you know, you're talking about destroying the walls. And I want to like, paint I them. I want to paint before them. Before you destroy them. And, you know, I still meet people who are hella pissed about that. And yeah. Up to now. And because like, it, was, it was intended that way. It was like, intended that way. Because also the funniest part was when you messaged me that I told you, actually, that's something I wanted to do. Okay. Because remember I told you, I was even going to ask Kina Swift. Swift is also yeah, like another yeah, amazing sure. artist and we're sitting in front of his amazing work. Okay. Um. And I was like, oh, I was going to ask Kina Swift if they wanted to come through. But since you've offered, like, yeah, let's do it. Because I already knew your work as well. Okay, yeah, sure, yes. As in, like, it was, we had a whole vision on how we were going to also, like, film the distraction and everything. Mm -hmm. We're going to, like, attach a GoPro to a (laughs) sledgehammer. Where did the vision go? (laughs) The vision went when my nini was, because I had shot when my footage was stolen, when my laptop and my hard drives were stolen. So the, all that disappeared with it. So actually, to be honest, the vision went like, like, yeah. Yeah. Actually, yes. Okay. So, hi, Swift. Um, <laughs> Swift is not another artist. Swift is like my hero. Oh, like, uh, oops. Yeah, I'm sorry. Exactly. Swift is not like, yeah. Swift <laughs> is like my hero, you know, from seeing his work, like coming up. Yeah. And being like, Have you ever uh, worked with Swift? Yeah. I've worked with Swift. How was that like? Intimidating. Okay. Not in the way like, oh my God, this is Swift. It's more of like the realization of the skill level. Uh-huh. Because I think Swift, okay, no, it's not a thought. It's a fact. Swift has the steadiest hand mm-hmm. in, you know, spray painting. Ah. Or any, anyone I've seen around. Like it's a very technical thing to say. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, you know, it's, and it's a flex. Like, you know, those people who do things effortlessly, mm-hmm. uh, the things that are really hard to do. Yeah. Yes. He, he makes them seem so simple things that we all struggle with. So, yeah. So, I, when I see his work, I'm just, like, blown away. Oh. And, um, yeah, he's one of those people who I can say have seen me grow. Oh, that's so cool. Right? <laughs> <laughs> seen yeah. me grow. So, yeah, so you, you come across, like, that's why a hero, because, mm. yeah, because I've seen I've seen his work and I've seen what he's capable of. Yes. Yes. No. How long have you been in the industry, in the creative Industry. Industry, like, and how did you start? Like, was it something where you just found yourself gravitating towards certain things and you're like, ah, maybe I can do this. I'm a, you fell into it. Well, the thing is, um, I could draw 
Mm-hmm. Since I was like a kid. Ah. Yeah, and I went through primary school just, you know, tearing pages from my, my books to draw stuff. I don't even remember what I was drawing, just not cars. Because yeah. I'm horrible at drawing cars. <laughs> <laughs> just everything except cars. Yeah. But, you know, in all fairness, where had I seen a car before? Because you, you grew up in Ushago. Exactly. Ah. A village kid. Okay, yeah. So basically, uh, I... I remember, I think I read an article about someone who had sold his sketchbook. Mm-hmm. I was around class seven. Mm-hmm. I was like, there's actually a valid career path that I can take. What you do know? you mean they sold the sketchbook? Like they were sketching and then someone came and bought it. Yeah, like oh. they had a whole sketchbook filled with, you know, sketches. And mm-hmm. someone just looked at it and a Japanese couple. I don't, I think that guy was called karaoke, karaoke someone. Mm, just like you. <laughs> yeah, right? That's my surname. Yes, just like me. And I was like, mm, this is interesting because I had the kind of dream that every other young kid has. Like I wanted to become a doctor first and then a pilot, then an engineer. Are you guys listening? Uh-huh. I would have been in those spaces. <laughs> then an engineer. And then I was like, actually, because I can draw, I think I'd be a really good architect. Ah. And then, uh, you know, I thought, you know, I could be an architect, practicing art. And, um, you know, I went into a high school that had art in the curriculum. Mm, nice. The specific reason that I went into, into that school was because mm. they had art in the curriculum. Like, by that time, I had figured it out. Mm. Wanted you wanted to... to do something with the arts. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, uh, and my dad was very encouraging as well because he is one of those people who is talented. He can draw, but he did not pursue it as a career path. Like, he mm. did something completely different. What so, did he do? He went into livestock and, you know, something called range management. So, okay. <laughs> yes, it has nothing to do with Range Rovers. <laughs> <laughs> range management uh-huh. is something to do with, you know, those arid and semi-arid, uh, you know, ah, pasture uh-huh. lands. Yeah, they just don't exist. You know, ranches. Uh, ranches yes. don't just exist, just just, just naturally. Mm. They have to be managed. Someone has to figure out what type of grass goes there, how to irrigation and, you know, erosion and all that. Oh, yes. wow. It sounds like, it sounds complex it's not as com- well. <laughs> it, it sounds complex, yes. But it's uh, stuff to do with farming, like botany mm. and all that. Yeah, ah, that's, okay. Mm-hmm. Ah. So he was very supportive. Ah, that's good. Mm-hmm. And and then now like... Campus. Then uh-huh. I went into... Uh, what I, did you study when you went to campus? Fine art mm-hmm. and design. Okay. Sound. Yeah, I used to tell people that and be like, finance and design. Okay. Yeah, fine. So I did fine art um, in, in KU mm-hmm. for four years. So that was a, that was now me meeting my peers. Because when you're an artist in this country, there is no knowing what you can do, especially because I was also not exposed to the art scene. Mm-hmm. I did not know. So wait, you come from Ushago and then now you go to KU? Yeah, I come from a very Ushago setting, mm-hmm. uh, not exposed, like, uh, uh-huh. yes. And then uh, my only saving grace is just going to KU because that's the only path I can see where I can do art mm. and make a career out of it. Like, I don't know that you can also become a self-taught artist mm-hmm. at that point because I've not seen another self-taught artist who is not a sign writer. Does that uh, make sense? Yeah, I, I get yes. that. So I go into KU um and now i meet my peers mm-hmm. and now i also get a feel of the industry and how it's like so what uh, was the first initial uh, when you say you get the feel of the industry is it like where you go like oh there's money in this or what no. was that realization uh it's the realization that i'm actually not alone Ah, uh, okay yes like there's other people who think like me i'm not like a weird kid I'm like oh my god there's there's other people who think like me. There are people who think better. There are people who just process, refine their ideas better. So yes, more of like that. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, and then the lecturers, you know, some of them had, uh, they were practicing artists as well. Uh-huh. So there was the seeing, the possibilities in the arts and all that. And from that, that was now a launching pad into now be discovering these, these self-taught artists, these studios out there that you can go to, and all, all of those places. Ah, yes. and then now, how do you now find yourself within the industry? Now you are done being a student. Mm-hmm. How now do you transition into now I work as an artist? Attachment, industry attachment. Like how was know, the, oh by the way, you have to do attachment. Yeah, what kind of yeah, attachment yeah. now do you get when you are doing fine art? Yeah. Well, it's more of like um, uh, you just go into a studio into uh-huh. someone who's you know practicing artist studio. Um, there's a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. There was a bunch of them at that point. 
So you just go, uh, it's like interviewing, sort of. Like you talk to the kind of artist you'd be interested in working uh-huh. with. And that's how I found myself in uh, Patrick Mukabi's studio. And Patrick was very receptive mm-hmm. to uh, basically uh, student artists just coming and learning from him. Because he had had this exp- um in his career, he's just mentored lots and lots of artists. And he was self-taught. And he was self-taught. Ah. So it was more of like, yeah, he was very welcoming to us. And, uh, you know, but the thing about being an artist is you can pick on, you know, your schedule, mm-hmm. what you want to do. And it was very receptive. It was more of like, you do your thing. Tell me where you're stuck. Yeah. I'll help. Ask for advice. You know, you know when you ask someone for, and also you also pick up a lot of, you know, very wise things and not uh, bits of knowledge mm-hmm. from people when they're just having regular conversations. Mm. So I met a whole lot of other people there. So uh, now that is in my third year. So I go back to school and now I have a feel of what the industry feels like mm-hmm. professionally. And I've made all of these contacts. Like I'm also like, oh, this is what people who practice art mm-hmm. out there professionally every day right yeah so i go back to school and when i get out of school i now go back to patrick's studio mm-hmm. and uh in my thinking i thought i was going to become a studio artist you know gallery artist i was like you guys have never seen the kind of art i'm gonna bring into the market <laughs> yeah you've never seen you know <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. uh-huh. it was more of like oh my god i have the most like i'm the biggest supporter of me Mm. Yes. You should be. Yeah, you uh, should uh-huh, be. Uh-huh. I was like, "Yo, you are not ready," <laughs> because I'm pulling up with you know, you know those people who have who have like these companies where they work with like twenty people. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when they're asked about their experience, they say they have a five hundred year experience of doing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that That's was the energy me. you walked in. That with. was the energy I was working <laughs> into the spaces. Like I was pretty young, but I had these goals. So like I'm gonna be because in all fairness, there is an objective aspect of art, and you can tell mm. when you're pretty decent at just uh you know, just art, you're just pretty decent. So yeah, I was very sure of myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, now I found myself, um, someone introduced me to the mural uh, scene. How was mural that? Mural graffiti. Because you, uh, you were used to doing like now on mm-hmm, canvas, mm-hmm. on paper and such. I was, yes. I was used to doing, uh, to painting canvases. And uh, the thing with canvases is I had gotten to a point where I had done the, the biggest canvas I could. Um, like, what was the size, if you could remember? Uh, 120 centimeters by 270 centimeters. Like really, really. Mm. It was just a... Uh, Long and straight, uh, you know, straight and narrow. It's like really high up. Mm-hmm. Yes, just filling the whole room, and a bunch of really huge drawings. And um, I wanted to do bigger, mm-hmm. but I still was very constrained towards studio practice. So it had it hadn't clicked to me. Like it had clicked to me at one point that I yeah. could do murals, but I did not know how uh-huh. to get into that scene. So there was, uh, you know, Kirosh. I don't mm. know if you know Kirosh. I know Kirosh. So Kirosh, Kirosh was, uh, you know, Kirosh was curating. Okay, was more of like organizing mm-hmm. this festival that was happening in um, Eastleigh. Mm-hmm. Um, it was called Samosa Festival, and he was like, "Yo, oh, I remember. yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah. tag along." And the first few times, I was like, "Ah, no, uh-huh. <laughs> I don't see myself in the streets getting burnt, like you know, like I wanna paint for." <laughs> Safari come. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I paint for in the boardrooms and all that. Like, I don't, yeah. Oh, I don't you see. didn't think boardrooms would be into murals? Yes. Like, basically. So, what was your perception of murals at that point? Uh, you know, when you don't know enough to have a perception of anything, mm-hmm. you just know that you need to do it, but you don't know how to also approach it. Ah, uh, okay. Like, you're like, ew. <laughs> <laughs> Not ew. You know, like, more of like, okay, this is interesting, but at the same time, um, there is so much I don't know. Yeah. And because I don't want to look like an idiot doing it, mm. I'd rather not. That the fear of mm-hmm. of, of being unknown. judged. The fear of exactly. Yeah, the fear of doing it wrong. The fear of doing it wrong. So um you see the satisfaction that I was looking for doing huge canvases, now I got that in murals. Mm. Because and then the fact that with murals it was just learning on the ground. Yeah. I get in there and Swift is there, you know, like Swift is just doing his thing and a bunch of really incredible artists, Chela. Mm. You know, it's just Blaine. It's just people doing incredible things and I'm just watching. I'm like, yo, these people are dope. 
and this is a really dope skill to have. Yeah. Even if I find myself still working in a studio, it's still a really dope skill to have. Um, so, and um, it was just an interesting thing. And I stuck. I just, yeah. I just stuck around. How was your first mural? Do you remember what it was about? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I actually did my first mural. Do you have a photo of it? Yes, yeah, somewhere. Send it to us. Oh, yeah. Please, I want to see your first uh, mural. <laughs> the first mural that I did, okay. The, uh, the thing is, you ever done something without knowing that it's in that direction? Mm-hmm. So the first mural that I did, I did at a friend's house. Um, it was just a tiny painting on the wall, and, mm-hmm. you know, but it was still a mural. Then I did something for a school project. And then Samsung, like the first professional project that I did was for Samsung, East Africa. Yeah. That was with my, you know, they came looking, they came to the school, to our school. Mm-hmm. It was still a, just a finished school. Mm-hmm. But they asked around and then they were told like, oh, you can talk to so-and-so and so. Like it was something organized completely by the school. Mm. So they wanted, um, there is this school that they had, they wanted it to be some sort of a model school. They had donated tons of tech equipment there. And um, initially, the way we were approached was like, oh, we want you to teach these kids how to paint, right? And then it morphed into, actually, you guys can paint. Like this school, you know. You, you it can, needs to be painted. <laughs> yes, it needs to be painted, right? You can spruce the space up. So uh. we were four of us. Uh, you know, one, uh, my friend Kahiga, we still work very closely. Yes. Even now. Mush. Uh, yeah, right? Shout out to <laughs> Mush. Shout out to Mush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we still work very closely together. So it was two of us and then two ladies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it kicked our asses. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yes, it thrashed us. So, uh, and this is now how this leads into Kerosh actually asking me to join him mm-hmm. to go paint murals. Uh, because later I'm showing him like, oh, I've I've painted, you know, like I've painted a school before. And he looks at me and he's like, yo, like you you guys did all of this with just just paint. Mm. You know, there's a way to to sketch. You sketch with chalk, mm-hmm. everything with paint. It's like, that must have been hard. It's like, I don't know. It's just, we just did it, right? Because the easiest way to do it is to sketch everything with spray paint. Mm. So... Oh, but My, you hadn't used spray paint at before, that time. Exactly. Ah. So the thing is, uh, as much as I can say, like my first, my entrance into murals is also closely tied to how I learned, how, basically learning how to spray paint. Mm. Yes. Like I might have done murals before, but not in the kind of way I do now because mm-hmm. uh, the process that it took me into you know, getting there involved a lot of like me learning how to spray paint. Ah. That was the industry standard. Okay. That is one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um... And so now you do this project. Now you you are telling Kirosh about it, and then yeah, you're he going he to just explain. he's just inviting me to these projects, and I'm like no. And then eventually, that is not my. We haven't even gotten to the first time. Like I'm, I'm uh-huh. sent out to go and spray paint. Uh-huh. But then a friend, a friend of mine, someone who's who mentored me, his name is Bantu. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he gives me this gig that everyone did not want. Like. I think the pay was low. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, yo, there's, and everyone was busy. So he's like, there's a project that's happening. Someone wants some, uh, you know, they want an artist who can spray paint, but everyone who can spray paint is not around. And I'm like, how much is it going to, like, how much are they paying? I'm like 10K. I was like, let's go. <laughs> this is the most money I've seen in my life. <laughs> like, it was just basically like, I was very enthusiastic about it because yeah. I was in a severe cash crunch. Mm-hmm. Yes, like I had fifteen hundred shillings in my in my account, so he tells me about it, introduces me to the guy. He tells me, text this guy, tell him you can do it. Mm. It was a tree, just the image of a tree in an office. Okay, but he wanted spray painted, it's a very specific tree. Mm. So I tell him that I can do it. He tells me that actually he's saying that it has to be spray painted, but in all fairness, this is not the kind of thing you can. You, there are some details you cannot spray paint. Mm-hmm. So you just carry your, you, you're a competent artist, just carry your paints, regular acrylic paints, but you know what? Buy a bunch of spray paint. Mm. So that at the same time, you know, uh, if he insists, you can also, exactly, yeah. it shouldn't be that hard for you to use. <laughs> so back then, spray paint was 150 shillings. I can. Uh. Yeah, so he tells me, just buy, just buy like three of them. Yeah. Uh, 150. This is, yeah, this is in Wait, 2016. I missed, I missed that that phase. <laughs> you missed so that I phase? Spray paint is like 500 babakan. Uh, well, 
Where do you buy your spray paint? Because mine is a thousand shillings a can. <laughs> okay, no, but, but you also use fancier. No, it's just professional, professional. Yes, paint, exactly fancier. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so yes, it's still like if you're getting it for five hundred shillings. Yes, but anyway, so he tells me about this guy. He tells me buy like three cans. Yeah. And I show up with them on site. So my money is in my bank account and you know fifteen hundred shillings. That basically is there for rent purposes because I need to pay rent mm-hmm. to someone. Plus, Thirty-five hundred shillings. I don't know where to get the rest of the, the money. The other money, yeah. Yes. So I'm like, um, in that evening, I basically go withdraw a uh, thousand shillings. Mm-hmm. I buy six cans. You know, by that time, we've agreed with this guy, my client. Now that I'm going to show up on site tomorrow at yeah. nine. So I buy six cans, and I'm like, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Uh, show up on site. He's like, yo, do your thing. So I'm given the wall. They're doing other fit outs in the space. Flooring, mm-hmm. painting, just regular painting. So I had I have the wall over there, and I start painting. So some of the details I'm doing, like a bit of spray painting over here, to just show the guy that I actually know how to spray paint. So mm. yeah, but I'm learning on the fly. So some <laughs> of the things now I'm doing with acrylic paint. And this guy at one point he stops me. He's like, "Hey, you do you actually realize that this client specifically requested that this be done with spray paint?" Mm. And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, sure. It's just that there are some details I cannot do." And it's like, okay, okay, carry on. So that's me just continuing. And uh, I think I, 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 it's like I leaned too, too much to add now the acrylic paint. Yeah. I didn't notice. I was like, stop. I don't want us to do this project and uh, not get paid because we did not understand what the client wanted, right? Mm-hmm. I think it was, I would rather just send this image to the client first so that we don't do this project mm-hmm. and not get paid. And I panicked. <sighs> Like, yo, exactly. <laughs> I've already spent my rent money. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, you know, it's an unfamiliar, you know, territory. I'm mm. just, yeah, I'm supposed to be competent. I was thrown, you know, when you're thrown into the deep end. Yeah. I shout out to Bantu for doing that because that made me learn. And then we got to a point, uh, I think he got the go ahead. So now it was, at that point, it was basically more like touch ups mm. to that. So a bit of spray paint, spraying, spraying over here, there, here and there. And eventually I was like, yeah, I can actually say it. When he said that, I was like, yeah, <laughs> then what are we doing here? <laughs> like, it was more so of like, okay. Why? Uh, uh, not even like, uh, I understand. I understand why you'd be, you'd not be confident. Like, right? I yeah. completely understand that I'm not, I am, I'm not qualified. But they I, don't know that. Yeah, but still, I know you, that. You're shukuing yourself. I am confident with what I'm doing, uh-huh. you know, but I understand why I would not be trusted. Like, you know, there is, mm. yeah, I also don't have anything to my name in that regard. Okay. So all of his concerns are justified. Mm-hmm. So for me, basically what I'm trying to do is also do decent work in such a way that he, I also don't mess his work up, mm. you know? So there are stakes that I'm looking at. And I also understand if I don't get paid at, you know, like no, the stakes, the stakes, yeah. <laughs> the stakes like, yeah, it's actually coming the out. The stakes and are high. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I spent like 30 minutes there by that time because it was in an enclosed space. Mm-hmm. My head was just, you know. Oh, because of the fumes. Yeah, the <gasps> fumes of just, this is my first time. And my my finger, like basically because you have to press the nozzle, uh, yeah. my index finger was basically really tired. So I was using my thumb <laughs> to spray. <laughs> when he said that I was done, I was like, yeah, Yay. I just collected my stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Finished and paid me. Ah, oh, you and got the, rent and then more. And the headache magically disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, ah. the headache magically disappeared. Yeah. So that was like your first paid gig. Yeah, that was my first gig. Uh, yes. Mm. Like now, I was now I had gotten into now what people called graffiti. Mm. Okay. So, how long have you been? Which year was this? This was in 2016. So that's almost mm, eight years now? Yeah. I, eight yeah. years ago. Yes. So yeah. for for those eight years, what are some of the hardships that you've dealt with as an artist? Well, it's basically, I think in the beginning, it was more of like the realization that, you know, there were so many exposure projects. <laughs> the, in the beginning, the concern was exposure. Yeah. And thank God that right now the con- the concern is not even com- uh you know exposure. Mm-hmm. Like we have moved past that conversation. Yeah. And it's with all art forms. Mm. Yeah, like we post that so hard that even people actually realize that oh these people need to make a living. Yes. Right? <laughs> but I feel like uh the biggest 
problem that I think the biggest issue yeah. that we've faced is more of like uh, the lack of goodwill. I feel like there's mm. a lot of a lack of goodwill mm-hmm. and, uh, from people. Mm. In this sense, it's hard to just to just paint. You see, my collection of artworks is on walls. Mm. To get walls, if I'm not doing commissioned pieces, I, I rely on people's goodwill to be yes. like, yo, there is actually, I have a wall. Mm. I'd like to, you know, to have this painted, right? So, um, you know, when I look at, uh, say, if I want to paint a spot in town, yeah, the fact that I'll be harassed for no reason mm-hmm. by the county government, yeah. that's what I mean. So sometimes I have the permission from the people, but I'll be harassed mm. by, you know. Oh, like the owner of the building is like, yeah, yeah please yeah, sure come. you paint. But, but now can Joe comes and they're like, what exactly, are you doing here? Exactly. Where are your permits? Where are your Did permits? You so, um, so that's that's actually one of the biggest issues that mm. we face. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Because yeah. I figured, I assumed the biggest issue with Tao would actually be the owners of the building being okay with it. No. The reason the owners of the buildings are a bit apprehensive uh. is because they're going to get harassed for noise. Oh, because even now them, they're exactly. getting harassed exactly. for having the yes. artwork on their walls. Yes. And it doesn't make sense. So here's that the is... thing. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, right? it doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. It's the same way. It's Trust me. It's the same way how you. it's impossible to see a performance, you know, a concert in the middle of the street in town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the same. Oh. It's the same oh, way. Oh, yeah. I might want to do something yeah. with my building, but then now they come and they have all these they rules. They disrupt. They have all of these rules. The rules oh, are very wow. ambiguous mm. uh, and they're there for a reason. Like there is the distinction between branding and um, branding and mural. Mm. Mirroring, right? So if you're drawing mural like painting. their logo, mm-hmm. that's acceptable. Mm-hmm. If you're drawing, no, if you're drawing a logo, that's, you know, that's that's considered branding, branding yeah. which should be paid for, right? Yeah. But if you're doing a mural. Oh, they have, is, you have to pay Kanjo for branding. Yes. So it's lumped together. Does you that make to, sense? Wait, you have to pay Kanjo for branding your own building. Yes. That it's your own building. Yes. Okay. You get, but at the same time, you see now murals mm-hmm. and graffiti basically is not, not necessarily, but basically because all graffiti, like, you know, what we consider graffiti here is something that falls into the category of murals. Yeah. It's something that falls under the category of now cultural work, right? Mm. And when it's lumped together with branding. Branding, yeah. Yeah. You see who you're competing with? We are up against companies. I don't mm. have the same budget as Safari. Yeah, you wouldn't. I wouldn't have the same kind of budget. And even when the, so the building owners are apprehensive because mm. they don't want to deal with the headache yes. of having to deal with Kanjo. Mm. And at the same time, uh, also, like when there is an opportunity to get paid, there is no way I'd, com- uh, I'd compete with a brand that has advertising budgets. Yeah. You know, in yeah. paying out, building owners to give me access to their spaces in town. Mm. Yes. That's so true. Do you, Are there like gatekeepers? in? Because you know, like the... We we know there's gatekeeping generally in the creative industry where I guess we'd say people like agencies become gatekeepers nowadays. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to now the kind of art you create, what does one gatekeeping look like? And two, have you interacted with it in any way? Well, with every industry, mm-hmm. because I think for me, gatekeepers are people who are trying to be relevant in a particular industry, right? Mm-hmm. Like there are gatekeepers, but in the in our industry, to be specific, I think we've made gatekeepers basically irrelevant mm-hmm. because yeah, it's okay gatekeep, but I'll still do my own things <laughs> on my own. Does that make sense? Like we've made <laughs> them gatekeeper. <laughs> exactly, it's okay. You you can keep you can man you that can gate. The gate. You keep the gate. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I it, I there is just I can stay outside. Mm. Uh, and that's the thing. That's the beauty of mural art. Yeah. The fact that the people who want murals are just it's so so diverse mm-hmm. in the first place, so diverse, and basically so specific with what they want. You don't you don't have the risk of basically someone get keeping that opportunity from you. Yeah. Largely, the people who found me found me in a very specific manner. Like they were like, I'm specifically looking for this person, mm. right? And mm. the funniest thing is, I think I'm actually, at this point, I'm actually spoiled <laughs> in this way. Yeah. Um, one, when I was coming up there, when I was coming up as an artist, mm-hmm. I would meet these people who are like, oh, we have this opportunity. It's an incredible opportunity. I just have to talk to, I'll talk to my boss about it, right? Yeah. And I'll make sure you get that opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. Which would never materialize. Mm. So uh, I learned, I learned to survive without people having to talk to their 
you know yeah. about about me right yes so which means that the people who recommend me to spaces are just really really serious people because sometimes you find someone who's like oh i'll recommend you to this this uh, so and so and then all you have to do is just make sure that you give me a cut later mm. that's the reason i'm saying that i'm spoiled mm-hmm. because i don't have to deal with people like that uh, yeah because the people that patronize me and basically buy my work mm-hmm. just really serious people we we don't have those kind of conversations yeah anywhere. does that make sense yes i get that exactly so not get keepers i can't paint anywhere i'm mm. just me you know uh which and i completely understand how that would work in music yeah and film because you are not in charge of distributing your work like you can't mm. do your thing on your own yes but it's really really hard to get keep artists mm-hmm. because you can't really lock down all channels and say that everyone has to go through Yeah. And also I think with the rise of the internet mm-hmm. and access to all these platforms like the way you're saying I'll paint outside. Yeah, like, I'll paint outside. It's the same I, thing. I can paint in my room. Yeah, you'll take oh. I I can put my I can decide to put my film on YouTube and there's nothing someone can do about it. Like I might say okay, I'll just say I didn't make this money. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I didn't make any money from it, but I can or you can even be the one to go pitch to Absolutely. these people yourself. Yes. But I also understand that the ecosystem with music and film is a bit different. Yes. And it's a bit harder than you know you can't be everything. You, know? mm. you need someone, you need security the on team. set. You can't be fighting that <laughs> <Yeah>. on set. <laughs> so mad respect if you're making film, if you're making yeah. music in this country just mad respect to you. It's really hard out there. and i understand the privilege that i have mm. as someone who just can wake up and paint in their room yeah so yes it doesn't go without notice the kind of work you guys do looking at the career you've had mm-hmm. um so far mm-hmm. is there anything you would do differently there's tons of stuff i've learned yeah and largely i've learned by also trying it out right like i have ideas i try out some of them fail mm-hmm. so there are things that I'd go back and I'd be like, mm, "Don't put all, don't put a lot of energy on this. Mm-hmm. You know, lean heavier onto this other side." Yeah, it's still a very evolving career. Mm-hmm. There's tons of things I'm still learning. Yeah, so I can say that. Oh, um, actually, when I think about it, I've learned a lot. Mm-hmm. And if I was to go back and apply all of that uh, knowledge, but you know, when I was starting, I'd be like, "How?" Oh, I want hit one. <laughs> like I uh, basically, you know, one that ge- boy genius and all that. Yeah. You show up and you, everyone is like, "Yo, where do you come from?" But at the same time, mm-hmm. knowledge, you know, you can't get knowledge all of it at the same time. Everything has to come, you know, one step at a time, right? Yeah. It might overwhelm you and you also don't know what to do with all of this. So yes. I don't think there's stuff I would do differently. Yeah. I think everything has just played out just perfectly. Mm. How how would you say you have survived the creative industry? Um I I think I looked at it, analyzed it and I just realized that everything had to make commercial sense to me mm-hmm. when I was starting out. Okay. That was, that was really important. Um in based on my background, I just looked at it and I was like, mm, I can see I see the other side of how it's really really hard. Mm-hmm. Uh struggling as an artist, right? Yeah. And that's why I found myself into murals because now murals made commercial sense mm-hmm. of um say a uh, studio and a uh, 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 studio practice. Ah uh, really? Yes. Okay. So there's been a bunch of really smart like financial decisions mm-hmm. they made. Um you know not overly genius but more of like oh from a survival point of view I think I need to go in this direction because frankly mm-hmm. it's what's bringing me money. money. Yes at this point. Yeah. Um basically me treating it like a livelihood mm-hmm. more than i would just like a uh, see passion mm. yeah i understand that this is what i do for a living mm. i understand it has to make an impact in people's lives yeah. me to also get paid ah i you know that, like when you said that it just hit me you've never like had a employment like a job or like <laughs> You yeah. never even done like a stint. I have, I have. You have? Oh my god. When <laughs> right, and what right? was okay, it? Okay, okay, now it's still in the still in the same direction like art. But I have what volunteered at a school. Ah, okay. Like you I, were teaching. Yeah, I was teaching. Uh-huh. Uh art, you know, like as an as an art teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh you know, 200 shillings uh half day. That was back in 2012. So the students were paying 200 bob no, or no, no, the school not, was paying you 200 the school, bob. Yeah, the school was They were paying you 200 shillings for half a day. Yeah, for half a day. 
And I'd how many say, days a week are you going? Once? Uh, or? That'll be, no, that'll be, I think four, five days, four days, four days. Actually, so it was like five eight, days a week. Uh, so that's like a thousand bob each week. Yeah. But I didn't, I also didn't have anything else to do. Mm. Uh, 2012, I was on long okay. holidays. And that you were still like a student at that point? Yeah, I was still a student. Ah, so but that's the like closest. Pesaya, yeah, credit. Yes, Pesaya <laughs> credit. And, uh, you know, Pesaya yogurt. Pesaya chip was a 30. <laughs> my embe. Eh, no, pesaya mangoes. I was still under my parents' roof, so I did not have to worry about mangoes. <laughs> you know <laughs> mangoes are provided for mangoes are provided for so <laughs> all i needed was just pesa ya uh chipo za that itao yeah did, did you did you used to buy like that cup place in audion mm-hmm. yeah, yeah that sure. was uh, yeah aki anyone who's is there an indian artist who's never cooled those chipos <laughs> <laughs> i don't know like if they must be a unicorn or oh, the new age kids probably they like, don't oh guys, yeah i wonder what their chips for 30 bob is Trust me, they have their chips they for 30 They must have bob. something yeah, that's like their have... chip for 30 bob. Mm-hmm. Small chars. They're like, yeah, oh my hey, God, I was I'm really like... struggling having <laughs> 250 shillings small chars <laughs> in class. <laughs> Because of inflation. Yeah. So that's their 30 shillings. See the way we talk to our parents and they're like, oh my God, I was really, really struggling because lunch back then used to be like uh, one shilling and 50 cents. <laughs> yeah. So. And then now yours is 30 bob. Exactly. Rice for 30 uh-huh, bob. Uh-huh. And then now smoochas. Because I'm yes. like, how is it that these days smoochas are like 50 bob? I'm like, do you remember when you'd kula for like 15 bob? Mm-hmm. Right? I remember like when they became very, they were everywhere. And then now... With, I remember for me, with 25 bob, I could eat it as a hot dog. Okay. The kachumbari, yeah, the yes, bun, yes. and then they cut out my nini nicely. And then mm-hmm. they even, I remember like there's even a guy who used to make sure we had like paka mustard. Hey, hey, I was like, hey. Where are you buying your smoochas from? That's from in Kanga. There's a guy okay, who came and okay. set up like close to our house. Paka used to be like, when yeah. I would shuka the mat from mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nimetokatao, my shenanigans. Na shukia na piti hapo kwanza. Okay. I kula and then now I go to the house. That was ah, my routine. That's an interesting. Galdina. Yeah. That was like, before Galdina was girl denying a good okay. one. <laughs> what advice would you give um, someone who's starting out as an artist and they're like, they're not seeing where the money is or they're not, like, they're not sure about what the future looks like? Um, You basically... You have to realize that you can evolve mm-hmm. as a person, right? You don't have to do the same thing yeah. over and over. If you're doing something and you're not seeing the money in that direction, try change something. Mm-hmm. Evolve in a certain uh, Like there's someone who's looking for what you're doing. Yes. You know, change tact. Sometimes it's not even what, it's basically not what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes like you need to just get to people out there. Like yeah. your work is important. Just find a way of aligning it. Mm-hmm. With, uh, with a cause. So keep creating. Mm-hmm. Keep creating. Keep creating. Exactly. Can we look at, like, I don't know, are you working on, like, a secret project? Uh, I'm always working on those <laughs> secret projects. Yeah. Yeah, like, um, okay, it's more of, like, uh, I'm always working on um, the kind, you know, when you're in the lab and you're doing stuff that's basically for you yeah. to, develop, to develop your work, mm-hmm. there's always that happening. And, um, you know, in this year... I want to see if I can do an exhibition. That would be interesting. I haven't done one in never. <laughs> There's never been a Victor only, ex- a Victor solo exhibition. That would be interesting. Yeah. I'm trying to find, I'll find a way. If mm-hmm. I don't find a way, just know that, you know, if you don't see it, just know that people just bought my work in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Before it got to the yeah, exhibition. Yeah, 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 sure, yes. But I think uh, for me, one thing, okay, collaborations. Mm-hmm. Collaborations. Okay, because I actually thought about it, like, um, if I was to go back, I would still do collaborations, but I would align them. Mm-hmm. I think I've worked with so many people. The thing about collaborations in this space, like, I feel like that's a huge part of surviving the creative industry in this country, right? Yeah. I feel like um, there's room for more collaborations. Actually, not in, you know, uh, out of whatever discipline you're in, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, not just mural, uh, mural artists, mural artists artists more of like cross industry collaborations mm, but, like work with a filmmaker yes work with a filmmaker but uh, what i feel like every time i collaborate like a lot of the times that i've collaborated with people i felt like i'm open to that mm-hmm. but more people take collaboration as like oh it's like you're open to abuse more like, ah. you know, you're opening yourself to abuse more than you get ah. okay i see i see what you're saying see what i'm saying yeah i see it 
So you think you're collaborating, but you're not. Yeah, yeah, because I've also had like an I've had incidences where there's people who approach and they say, I want to collaborate. And mm-hmm. you're like, yeah, me too. I'd love to. Mm-hmm. But then you realize like in the end, you're the only one giving. Yes. And then you're like, because collaboration is like, I give, you give. Exactly. We both benefit. We both benefit, yeah. right? But there's even even uh, across, across brands, mm. we, I don't see that happening a lot in Kenya. And also goes back to the whole goodwill aspect. Yeah. I think people have been, is it jilted or jaded? Yes, jilted? both. Both of them, <laughs> yeah. right? Had broken from mm. collaborating with people who also don't take whatever it is. Yeah. Seriously. So basically, now you can imagine with brands, you will go into... You'll step into an office on to collab- wanting to collaborate with these people, but they will take your idea and run with it. Oh, yes. So, I remember there's a guy, um, well, back when I was, I used to do a lot more script writing mm-hmm. and he had, he'd pitched um, a show to a very big uh, media house mm-hmm. in the country. Okay. in the country and they were like yeah right now we don't think we're able to do that and then like i think it was two or three months later we see the show airing airing yeah and we're like so mm-hmm. at first we we're like hey they did your thing congratulations mm-hmm. and then it's like did you see my name attached to it okay no. and then you're like wait i didn't check the credits and then you go check the credits and he's actually not there it's yeah. not him any yeah i so get it like mother they just like so mm-hmm. when he he went and wrote in and they're like no this is a completely different concept you're even thinking about it before you came to us maybe some things just seem similar but it's not the same thing yes so basically i think that's actually the biggest challenge yeah that you see when i talked about goodwill mm. because this has everything to do with the lack of goodwill right yes you go yes. Into space. yes that is what you know uh that is basically something that's tied to that Mm. So uh, the reason the industry is not growing as such is because you don't have more cross-industry collaborations. collaborations. So when you're asked about, oh, how much did it cost for you to do your uh, album? Mm. You know that you hired uh, someone to do album. You Someone donated album and because you did not necessarily pay them. Yeah. So you can say all it cost you to do the, to produce that is basically how much you paid your producer. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And uh, all of their fees directly attached to that. But apart from that, because no one else got paid. Yeah. You know, You're not set. counting their exactly. contributions. So it means that as even... As deserving to be paid. Yes. Even when you have to sell your project upwards, when you have you are pitching it upwards, yeah. you also forget the amount of labor that went into that. Mm. So everyone else ends up not being compensated. Yeah. Which means even your work, you know... You also get up being shortchanged. Like yes, it's a whole ecosystem. Because it's not you're not actually getting mm-hmm. the worth that is actually Yes. Because there are people who And effort. maybe that's also why people think that things are cheaper than they are. Exactly. Because then they're like, oh, but this person quoted this, but it's because they haven't it's the difference is when considered. Victor is, is giving the pitch, you're counting every single thing that has gone into that, every exactly. single person who's participated. Mm-hmm. And someone else is just like, ah, see, we'll just we can just account for just the the big bits yes. and forget everything else. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, and that's, I feel like that's a major problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, it affects how, you know, the cost of doing stuff. Like, yeah. you know, everyone ends up being blackballed. Yeah. Because now it looks like whatever you do is just tip. You can just call an artist and be like, hey, can you come help me out with the project? So you show up wanting to help out and you're like, oh my God, I'm collaborating with this person. Mm. What you don't know is that that's a paid project They are for paid, them. yes. Because I'm like, hey, we've seen those ones as well. Yes. Where it's a, someone's actually getting money for it and then they just lie about it. So you come, you work for free. Mm-hmm. And then there's people who are even getting free money for what? And you're like, wait. And it's not in You guys paid. were getting paid? Yes. Uh, so thankfully, I've gotten to a point where I can see that I can mm. I can see that coming, and I'll respectfully say no. Yeah. And largely, I collaborate with my peers. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I also think there should be a price tag attached to you know when when you guys are doing a collab a collab project. Yeah. Like it would be really wise to sit down and be like, oh, if you are doing this professionally, how much, how much would, would it cost? Charge? Yeah. You know? So that at the end of the day, when you have the project and it's done, you know that oh, actually, if I had done this, everything completely professional. This is how much it would cost me. Mm. So you don't also end up blackballing yourself. Yeah. And all that. Because someone else can approach you and say, hey, I liked what you did. I want mm-hmm. something the same, whatever. Yeah. Now you already have a figure in mind because you, you know. Have- I agree. Because mm-hmm. I like that, uh, the collaborating cross industry. Where yeah, it's, it's like- a cross. I'll tell you someone who sees it. 
uh, there's a bunch of people who see. I think Mudoni Drama Queen sees it. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, with the festival. I think Crazy Kenna also sees it. Mm-hmm. I've seen, I've seen BN in, you know, that basically speaks to like, oh, this guy is thinking beyond his industry. Yeah. And when you collabo, mm-hmm. you're basically bringing your fans together and they're yes. realizing. That's, that's what people don't realize. You're introducing people to people who've never, mm-hmm. like, you're intro- I'm introducing you to the people who like me and yeah. you're introducing me to the people who already like you. Exactly. So it's like, because you don't know, because if we like each other, that means we have certain things in common. Definitely. Right? So mm-hmm. that means we probably attract people who are very similar yeah. in the things they like. So if I'm bringing you onto my side and you're bringing me onto your side, it's like, we're getting those people who are, you know, if you drew a Venn diagram. Yes. That yeah, 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 hey. sure. And six, de- <laughs> six degrees of separation. Yeah. So everyone is connected. The fact that everything is connected, right? And um, in this country, there is a huge disconnect. Mm-hmm. Um, we still haven't connected issues. I feel like, and I feel like this is pitched. You see the way things are pitched from a career point of view? Yeah. You are going to go and become a doctor. Yes. And okay, so basically, I think it's how, um, say, professions are pitched to you, like as kids, the whole sociology thing Yeah. in this country, right? You're told that as a doctor, there is no way you'll ever meet with an engineer. Mm-hmm. And people go into their lives thinking that, oh, you know, those, those other people yeah. who don't matter from, you know, in Kwanza, this profession. Uh, Kwanza, if you're a, a, a creative, you're always, Kwanza asks, we're thrown yeah, off to the yeah, side. Yeah, like, sure, yes, chana now. Yes, wale chana now. Yeah. And it's okay. It also means that, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, no one is consistently thinking about legalizing my profession in that. Like, you know, yeah. the, the whole bills that, oh my God, we want to set up a creative, mm. what do you call it? A monitoring, what, what, what. Yeah. Like, they don't know what to do with us, right? But that now comes down all the way into the creative industry. Mm-hmm. When someone thinks of themselves, like I think of myself as an artist, visual artist, right? Yes. And there might be the thinking that, oh my God, um, music is not important to me. Mm. But I can tell you that music is actually really important to, you know, I feed off music. Yeah. I create, I listen to a lot of music. And apart from the listening to music, I, you know, I feed off the energy, right? Mm. And music is important. Like I yes. never look at musicians and think like, oh, those other guys. Yeah. You know? Same as film. Yes. But it's a shame that these industries are not more linked together. Mm. Um, like I don't see cross, you know, cross industry collaborations between, say, musicians and visual artists. Mm. They also they don't know what to do with us. Yes, even even other artists exactly. Don't know what to do. I, even other artists <laughs> don't know what to do with us. I yeah. know what to do with musicians. Yes, you know, I and I know what to do with film. Mm. But to us, like those those guys that just can you, know, you tell us what because. Where, when when you think of uh, collaborating with, say, a, a musician, musician uh-huh. what does that look like? I'm a mural artist, right? Yeah. So one of the things I can show up, I can show up on on set. Yeah. You know, for music when you're videos, doing the right? Music videos, yeah. Something else, like right now, uh, basically album covers. Oh yes, album, album covers. Art. Even album me, like, art. yeah. Even me, I get. Uh-huh. I I work with, like, with the we have album art yeah. for the podcast. Yeah. So for album art. you, you were the mural mm-hmm. artist for oh, your, my yeah, backdrop yeah, exactly, before when exactly. we started the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's experiential. Like this, that is the most basic form of that. But you can take it a step higher. It yeah. can be experiential. It can be like, oh, you, you know, because I also have my own people. Like I, I have people who just really love my work coming mm-hmm. into that space and be like, you actually did album art for so and so. Yeah. Right now, there is the animated. I don't know what I can call it, but you look at Spotify sometimes when it's playing and you can see the animated, yes, the, the loops, mm, you know, some of them, you know, some of them are just drawn from music videos. Some of them are just, uh, I, most of them I've seen are just the music video thing. Right. Yeah. But a lot of the ones that are really interesting that I've seen, maybe I'm biased. Yeah. Uh, it's because I'm an artist. <laughs> the, the really interesting ones that I've seen yeah. are basically animations, you know, animated album covers. Because mm, I think that would want, would keep me looking at it. Because if I'm, I'm oh. just seeing a video yes, of the you know, nini. The context. Just like the, the gif. Eh. Because I'm like, I think I would be drawn to actually watching that. Because with okay. others, I just, I'll just close Spotify and yeah. just listen. But then again, it's also a whole ecosystem. Because when you look at it, you know, from the time that I think artists were important to, you know, uh, visual artists are important to musicians when we still 
when there was cassettes and mm. CDs and and vinyls, right? Yeah. But right now, when everyone is putting out their music in, uh, you know, your streaming platforms, streaming platforms, we don't really, and I completely get that, right? Yeah. But art can transcend that, like it, it can go to a point where it's just experiential. Mm. I think. Would you ever do like, because um, as you were talking, I was thinking you become the subject of like a music video, and then the end product is whatever the song inspires you to actually create. Uh, and then yeah. that becomes the album cover or the cover for that single. Absolutely. And then you we, we don't even see the 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 musician. So you know, like the civil usually they usually have the girls dancing and they do like a whole pool party. No, it's just like the process of like doing the actual mural becomes the process of the <laughs> right, music video. Right? Why haven't you asked? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. Oh, yes. But I think that would be so dope. Yeah, that would be interesting. And uh I also think like it doesn't have to be me. You know, some some things are very interesting. Like some of the things that I've done in my life in, in my career. Yeah. They started off as oh my God, that would look so dope. It doesn't even have to be me. Mm. I used to pass by Excelcom's house every day and think just thinking that would that would be any just a beautiful surface if it was painted. Yeah. It doesn't even have, have to, to be, be painted yeah. by me. You yeah. Know? So go for it. You were just seeing the potential of the potential. what it could be. It just ended up being me. Yeah. But it didn't have even to be Even if it was me. another artist, it would have still Equally been a Equally as beautiful. brilliant, you know? Yeah. Everyone I that, that I know that does murals, if they had done, if they had painted that space, they would just have, you know, elevated yeah. it to where, or even better, you know? So that's how I look at it. Some of these things, like uh, when I look at film, it's just, you know, on set. Yeah. I feel like um now the thing about film, film is a documentation of, you know, real life, right? Mm. And I feel like, well, but the thing about film is that it can also transcend some some of these experiences and it can shape, you know, like the way we have these conversations about not seeing art, mm. you know, not needing art in people's homes. Mm-hmm. But you see, it's a behavioral thing that can be changed. Yes. On film. Mm. Like if you have someone set that's just full of art, it just means... It just... I know someone goes like, oh, I can do that with my house. Exactly. Like you. Yes. It's about possibilities. Apart yes. from documenting people's life, it's about possibilities, right? Mm. Yeah. I, but then again, what do I know? I'm just a guy <laughs> who paints in Gidera. <laughs> there you go. Again. I have to give a disclaimer as a person who's not a specialist, you know, like uh, it's just things that I observe. And I'm yeah. Like, uh, you know, restaurants. I feel like the reason that murals have, like when I started, mm-hmm. it, there was a bunch of people doing murals, right? But now I can say it's an industry. Mm. The more the merrier. Yes. Um, the more people coming in, the better it becomes because mm. we end up becoming an industry, right? I feel like the reason murals have survived is because murals make commercial sense. Mm. Like if you see, if you go into a restaurant or if you go into a club and it's painted, you know, the person behind that restaurant and someone behind another space mm-hmm. is looking at that space and be like oh is the reason that space because we are, we are largely offering the same experience yeah the reason that space is popping could it be, be because of this yeah art? could it be because of this art could it be because is this like a secret ingredient of sorts mm. no because like i've seen the way the restaurant you painted okay. i've seen it a lot of people who go to that restaurant mm-hmm. they always have to take a video of the art. Yeah. And they go like, oh, I went to this restaurant and the first thing they show is, is that. and every time I see, I go like, Victor, yeah. like, oh, <laughs> it's okay. so exciting. Yeah. So that's yeah. how murals make commercial sense. Mm. So that's how, um, in this, because, you know, at the end of the day, all of these collaborations also have to make commercial sense. Yes. But it's okay. The one thing that I want to tell, you know, uh, for cross, uh, cross industry collaborations, the mm. one thing that I want to say is, we can share services. You yeah. don't have to show up with money. In fact, if someone shows up and they're like, oh, you're just too expensive mm. uh, for this, I can tell that they, you know, you did not consider that I would accept a service that you offer. Yeah. Bring back butter trade. Yes. You know, bring back butter trade. Because as, as people who who work in terms of like, we know, we know how expensive it is to create art. Yeah. And sometimes you're like, honestly, right now, I know me, I can't afford mm-hmm. Vic. So what can I do? For Victor. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But people have, or people what can forget. I offer you? What is it that I have mm-hmm. that you would want? A okay. service that I have that you would want? And then we go like, okay, cool. Absolutely, do you wanna... absolutely. So, yeah, I do a lot of butter trade, by the way. Yes. When but, you see me doing things with a lot of creatives, uh-huh. 
90 it's buttering well most of the time actually it's, exactly it's exactly just, just but shade. this conversation transcends creative spaces right yeah i can tell that it also doesn't happen in you know uh, across like brands creatives mm. for instance i think i think people think you see the way i told you that people don't connect things yeah I think but brands have money. We don't tell brands to come but a trade with us. Okay, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> there is a point. There is a point to this. Uh-huh. There is a point I'm making, right? For instance, I think um because people don't connect issues, uh we end up thinking like, oh, if I'm a doctor, yeah. I make my money is superior mm. to your money as the guy who has a business, you know, yeah. an exhausted business. Mm. It's just money, right? Yeah. Like if you show up to a doctor who owns a rental and be like, ah, okay, that's a horrible <laughs> analogy. <laughs> but look at it this way, right? Like um, if I went, if I walked into say KQ mm-hmm. and I told them I have this project that I want to do, you know, you guys don't even have to pay me in mm. cash. Like I have money to miles. buy it, miles yeah. or just flight tickets you know, to a place. Yeah. But people think that, you know, oh, we, we as the airline, we make superior money or even Safaiko. Mm. There is things they can offer yeah. that are equivalent to the the worth of the service that you're providing. Mm. You know? Yeah. They make completely sense. There are things that just make complete sense, you know, mm. financial sense. Only that we've segregated money. Yeah. Like there is Safaricom money. There is KQ money mm. that doesn't somehow interact with my money. Mm. You know? Yeah. That's now that's what I'm trying to say. Mm. So it makes sense. Yeah. But I still want Safaricom money. Like you, exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I say this on this platform? Yeah. I don't take Safaricom seriously as a brand in that regard. Like yeah. in that regard, like uh, I think the time has passed. No, I'm I'm saying in terms mm-hmm. of like when working with a brand. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Um, because these people have those they marketing have the budgets. budgets. They have the it's marketing like that budgets. thing you were saying. You as an artist, you can't compete with a brand mm-hmm. when you are doing um a mural in tao yeah so if kanjo guys come to you and they say no we want you to pay the same way mm-hmm, mm-hmm. safaricom would pay to have we keep saying safaricom the way a brand i'm sorry you're just out there <laughs> yeah that's that's how low hanging fruit <laughs> yeah like the the way they would charge a brand mm-hmm. shouldn't be the same way they charge you it, right okay yeah yeah so it's like it's the same thing it's because these people also have Cause yeah, there's a buttering. Cause that's cause then now they come with that whole exposure thing. Cause we are walking away from payment by exposure. Okay. Right. So where do we, how do we differentiate the butter trade, especially when it comes to brands? Cause with with among peers mm-hmm. or among each other, we can. It's easier to tell yes. where. Like for instance, I reached out to a friend of mine who produces like music, and I was like, "Could you help me produce a jingle?" for my podcast mm-hmm. and then you tell me what I can yeah what, the service, what service you would the equivalent want from service my to end. that right yes mm-hmm. but now with a brand mm-hmm. how 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 does that work a okay so uh so here's the thing you see the way I'm talking about the way people think that oh we are superior to your money yeah that also goes you know it extends to them thinking that your service is also not worth what you're mm. asking for, you know, mm. like mm. the the reason I'm saying the reason I gave that uh, flight ticket analogy, yeah, because flight tickets are expensive, expensive right? Expensive, yes. And chances are, if you show up and you're like, oh, uh, you know, whatever service I'm charging you, it's a two million shilling service, right? Mm. So give me flight tickets equivalent to that. Chances are they are going to think that whatever service you're offering is not, worth, not that worth two million. You get worth so of flights, yeah. The segregation of that money, mm. the fact that people think that oh, this is very specific. So how uh, do we handle that? How do we handle that? Yeah. It's basically showing up and being like, no, my service is actually worth this much. Mm-hmm. You no. Know, just because I'm in a different industry does not mean that whatever service I'm offering yeah. is not it's worth less. that much. Yeah. It's not less. You know, it's not mm-hmm. less that amount. Yeah. Yeah, it's worth that much. Mm-hmm. So you can decide. And you, it, it's Do you want to pay me in cash or do you want to pay me... In tickets. In, yeah. Exactly. Mm, so it's okay, also that giving now. people that options. Yeah. And like basically. So the idea you're saying we give it as an option. You give it as an option. Okay. It's, but I can tell that you know you can tell that you know people have not thought critically about it because mm. you haven't seen it implemented. Yeah, like yeah, that makes sense. Exactly. All yeah. of these travel influencers, all of these, yeah, like people, these people basically go to destinations mm. for their work as yes. research. I'm like, imagine partnering with them. It's like we're the one who's always taking them here. Mm-hmm. Like that, you get something because basically, by the way, when you think about it, influencing is 
technically that yeah where can. there's people who of course you still get paid because now for them they're like okay cool i still get to go do this and they're like okay we'll take you here and then you talk about how our services are yeah and you probably get us you know because you become like an authority in that because like and i'm that, always exactly, i'm always exactly. on a flight somewhere and she can dig at this point so i can tell you which ones to go for and which ones not to oh, go and for and that's actually a logistics job yeah you know, like it's actually a job in like figuring out the logistics of traveling is a really complicated job yeah <laughs> so my respect it's a whole to, industry it's a whole industry <laughs> but yes there is maybe it's one of those things i'm saying because mm-hmm. i don't see it yeah. but maybe it's because i haven't collaborated with these people in mm. doing something an in flight manual and then i'm like i'm out here but they probably do that mm-hmm. just i'm saying there is more to offer than, than just the money than, Exactly. Okay. And I I can feel like Can we do that with our landlords? Oh yeah, yeah sure <laughs> we can. We can absolutely do that with our, like there are services that just make sense. Yeah. <laughs> I need someone to film my work. If I meet a filmmaker and yeah. you know those are services that we can they very can easily yeah. yeah. Yes. I think maybe it just it it goes down to getting people to see the value in, in their work, work to yeah. Seeing the value in the work, right? Yeah. But for people to see to also see the value in the work we need I've always said that you know it's cultural like people who decide what is important mm-hmm. you know I feel like the people who decide what's important in this country uh you know largely how can I say this mm-hmm. like they're not serious people <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. like I don't know I never if you because uh you know newspapers and just the media and just that will tell you yeah. what people think is important in this country mm-hmm. don't think for a minute for a minute that it's accidental it's it's decided on that people have decided that you know and it's politics politics is important it's the most single most important thing in this country right yeah but what if we also had the same kind of people pushing the conversation in regards to culture mm. in regards to reviewing projects and be like oh this is actually a really important project yeah. so in the end because there are people who it's curators mhm shining a light on all of these interesting things that are just happening. Yeah. So, yeah. Um wow, we have entrusted the you know and I I had a whole conversation about okay, it was not a conversation. <laughs> Basically, I it was a whole that process and I wrote about it a while ago. Yeah. Uh we've entrusted the you know uh processes of deciding what's important, especially in the arts in this country mm-hmm. to people from who are not from here. Yes, oh my lord. That is so true. And they are very that enthusiastic. That is so people. true. They are very enthusiastic. As much as the, them not being not being from here is not really uh the biggest issue. They're mm-hmm. very enthusiastic about what they do. But I feel like we also don't take people from here who decide, you know, we're like, "Oh, I think this is important." Yeah. We don't take them seriously. Mm. So we end up having all of these brilliant projects that just, you know, disappear. Yeah. Don't, you know, they just there's a bigger way of just passing by. Mm. Yeah. Ah. I will gosh. remember the some of these points in <laughs> the you, middle of the ghetto. Home? In the middle of the ghetto I'll be like, "Yo, I should have said this." It's really hard to articulate my thoughts, but anyway, that's No, you've articulated your thoughts very well. They don't pay me for my critical thinking. <laughs> they pay you for painting. <laughs> they pay me for painting. <laughs> so I'm sorry if my thought process does not exactly fit into your, you know, <laughs> how you'd like to have it articulated. Yeah, I'm just a painter, man. I'm just <laughs> Ah, okay mm-hmm. but uh yeah painter with great thoughts wow. thank you for sitting down with me and sharing you're all your amazing thoughts you're welcome uh, i hope i connect to nimesa how cool is that right right yeah yes <laughs> if connect tap 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 to ten at least you Absolutely. we have access to you thank you think <laughs> 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 eh because i was in kumbushe we are beefy don't remind me of Victor is a concept he does not exist in real life. <laughs> oh he's, now now uh, he's a concept. <laughs> But thank you so much like um I think also I have you know sometimes that thing you're saying about like all these things are connected. Mm-hmm. The kind of art I create and the kind of art you create is very different. Mm-hmm. And it's also not very different like okay. in terms there of the things we do, yeah the things we deal yeah. with the way we approach things the like there's certain things that we both will have to deal with yes. whether we like it or not like right it. the same politics the exactly. same environment yeah yes so i'm i'm like getting that understanding is very 
it's it's good to know that you know that thing for oh when i'm not in this by myself yes, we're all tunakapitia wote si wote wembe ni ule ule yes. we're dealing with the same thing so sometimes when on one end you're like i can't believe i'm still dealing with this mm-hmm. there's also someone else who's dealing with the same exact the same thing, thing. Mm-hmm. as much as we might think that they're very removed yeah we're yeah. not in a vacuum Exactly. So I really appreciate your insights and the thoughts that you've shared with us. I hope that has helped someone who's trying to understand how to navigate things or like even what it's like right. okay. being an artist okay. and living as an artist by the way in this country. Wow. Sometimes I think um I get moments where I'm just like hey, it really sucks being a creative in this country mm-hmm. because of how we are and I'm using this word very deliberately how we are mishandled. Yes. Yeah. So sometimes it like you you go back to like uh it's like it's this thing I really really love <laughs> right but you all are treating it like it's not a, it's like do you not understand how important this, this thing is, is? Yes. yeah but you see the whole conversation of what is what is important yeah who decides what's who decides? important oh you know something else that is not important science and and health in this country it's equally not as important it's also exactly the same way. so we are struggling out here we're like, just like fighting for our lives but at the same time the doctors the doctors are also fighting for their, for their lives, lives. Too. that's so true because someone has decided that doctors are also not important you know exactly so we need to examine the things we consider important and yes. who's telling us what's and important and what's telling not. us what's so you have your own truth yes of what's important and what's not <sighs> That is so true. Thank you so much. Where can we find you on socials? Uh-huh. Where do we see your work? There's okay. someone who's never seen Victor's oh, yeah, art yeah, and sure. they want to know where to find it. Okay. So it's at Victor at Mwangi. On... You have to tell people it's Victor at. Okay. V-I-K-T-A-R-T. Yes. Mwangi. Um, that's on Twitter, Facebook. Damn, please. Uh, Instagram. <laughs> okay. It's It's been a minute since I used Facebook, but yeah, just Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Exists. Yes and um wow yeah on those platforms mm-hmm. yes and, and coming soon a website yeah coming soon I, there there is a website yeah that i share with squarespace <laughs> <laughs> they have given me hashtag the space not sponsored. <laughs> to 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 yeah hashtag not sponsored this just given me a space to just you know to hook my stuff outside their shop yeah <laughs> that's what's up mm-hmm. and okay. if, I, if i have an exhibition i'll let you No. Yes, oh yeah, we'd love to come for that. Yes. Yeah, and I hope I hope you actually put that together at Kuja 20. Right? Eh. Let's go see your right work on, on smaller pieces. Okay. Unajua tumezoea kuona kwa ma walls. Right? Ex- yeah, and someone actually asked me the other day like, do you do tiny art pieces? Mm. Yeah, and I, you know, to me and do you do paintings? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I so do. So do you? For the right money, like for the, for the, if the money is right. For the right amount of money, yes. Yes, but it's not even about the money. It's eh. basically just when the spirit is settled. Mm. There's a certain type of space you have to be in mentally to create that type of art. Ah, okay. Yes. All right. Now you know something. I now know something. Thank you so much. Um you I will leave Victor's info in the show notes and the description box if you're watching on YouTube. Um and also yeah, even us we are on all those platforms apart from Facebook yeah. and Twitter. <laughs> So technically we're just on Instagram and TikTok at JDL the podcast but personally as Muthoni you can still find me on Twitter at I am Muthoni Getao. Thank you so much for spending your time with us and listening to us um have a conversation about being artist in Kenya. Um look out for next week's episode as well. We are going to be talking about pleasure and female pleasure to be specific. So Be on the lookout for that. Also remember we've introduced a new series called Options, new episodes every Friday and um I'll see you over there. Thank you and goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>